Hey fellow traders, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to show you how do you use multiple time frame analysis to catch big trades. This video will show you how to catch big trades that yield big profits. We are not interested in trades which you know you put in a dollar and you make back 50 cents, you put in a dollar, you make back 150. Okay. In this video, we're interested in trades which you put in a dollar, you get three dollars. And basically high reward to risk trades and i want to show you how do you do that in today's video okay so what will you learn in today's video i want to start off by explaining to you why you should be using multiple time frame analysis in case you are not using it already it's very important that you integrate multiple time frame analysis into your trading and i want to convince you as to why you should be doing this then I want to show you how do you select your time frame combination using the factor of four. Then I want to go on to the swing trading strategy that was taught previously. Okay, just in case you didn't watch it, that video, I will leave a link at the top right hand corner. But I want to do a brief introduction to that trading strategy again because I want to incorporate multiple time frame analysis into this swing trading strategy. So I want to make this more advanced. I want to combine multiple time frame analysis and swing trading strategy to help you find trades which can yield very good reward to risk ratio. Then I will end off this video by showing you an exact case study. In fact, this case study will be a trade that uh, we send to our premium subscribers today. And that trade is pound dollar. Okay, we, we're going to break down step by step why did uh, our team decide to take this trade, the top process, everything, all those good stuff. Okay, so let's move on. So why use multiple time frames? Why should you even look at multiple time frames? It's confusing, it's harder to trade. Yes, that is true. But when you're using multiple time frames, what happens is that you actually get higher probability trades. Just think of it, which has higher probability? Three time frames pointing to a bearish move or Let's say just one time frame pointing to a bearish move. I think it's a no brainer, right? It should be the former. It should be three time frames. So if let's say you have the daily chart saying that it's bearish, you have the H4 chart saying that it's bearish, and you have the H1 chart saying that it's bearish. So something like this, okay? You have the daily, you have the H4, and you have the H1, okay? So if let's say this is bearish, and this is bearish, and this is bearish, where do you think price is likely to go? Which do you think is more, it's higher probability? This scenario one or scenario two, where maybe, you know, your daily chart, it's in down, okay? Your H4 is up and then your, let me just draw it. And then your H1 is down, okay? So which do you think has higher probability? It should be the first case, first scenario. So that's why you want to use multiple time frame analysis. You want to align the multiple time frames together. When it says that the, the market is bearish on all three time frames or on two time frames, whichever time frame combination you choose, then that's where you get your highest probability trade setups. Another reason why you want to use multiple time frame is because it allows you to catch big reward to risk trade. Okay, because you can fine tune your entry. That means that uh, you can enter on a lower time frame where your stop loss is tighter. Let's say you are trading the daily chart. Okay, so daily chart, the range tends to be very wide. So if you actually drill down to the H4, what happens is that you can have a tighter stop loss. If your entry is based on the H4 chart, then you can have a tighter stop loss and if price were to move in your direction, then you will, you will be able to capture a better reward to risk trade. So let's move on. Now that you are convinced, I hope you are convinced. Let me just clear this up first. Then we'll move on. Okay, so I want to go on to how do you select your time frame? Because you are convinced you want to use multiple time frame analysis and that's why you're watching this video okay so how do you do it i want to introduce you the concept called the factor of four or personally what i call the factor of four 
So whichever time frame combinations you choose, you want to make sure that it, it, it is at least a multiple of four. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Very simple. Let's say you are doing the uh, monthly, weekly, daily combination. You can see that monthly is actually about four weeks. Weekly to daily is about five. It's about a factor of five because in a week, there's five days. In a month, there are at least four weeks, depending on the month, of course, but you have at least four. So you want to apply this factor of four. So in, in the second combination over here, it's the same, okay? This one over here, daily H4, H1. In a day, there are six H4 candles because six times four is 24 and there are 24 hours in a day. So that part, it's, 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 it's fits the multiple of four. H4 to H1 is of course a multiple of four as well because uh, four, four H1 candles make a H4 candle. So that is the other combination or you can even use this one over here which is H4, H1, M15. Same thing again, it follows the rule of factor of four. So H4 to H1, it's a multiple of four. H1 to M15 is again a multiple of four. So you just want to follow this rule. I do not want to go into the full details about why you should be using a factor of four, but just take it from me that you want to at least be using a factor of four, okay? You do not want to be using things like this, okay? Maybe you can try understanding why this is not a good combination. Why is this not a good time frame combination? You might want to pause this video and consider. But the answer is actually real simple. H4 to H1 is a multiple of 4, that's right. But H1 to M30 is only a multiple of 2, it's not a multiple of 4. Because in an hour, there's only 60 minutes and M30, it's... One candle is 30 minutes. So two, two 30 minutes candle make up a hourly candle. So it is not a multiple of four. So you do not want to use this time frame combination. So this is how you use the factor of four. Just, uh, you know, just to clarify, you do not need to choose three time frames, but you do need to follow the factor of four. You could just trade the daily and H4, that's fine. You could just trade the H4 and H1, it's fine. But you want to stick to the multiple of four. So hopefully that is clear. If something is not clear, just leave a comment down below. Uh, my team will do our best to you know, help you and assist you with any questions you have. Now I'd like to do a brief introduction of the swing trading strategy that we covered many times. In fact, we have a lot of videos about this strategy. We show you that this strategy is really powerful. It works. But just in case you know you have not watched that, I want to just do a, a brief breakdown because after that, I want to actually apply this strategy with the multiple time frame analysis. So step number one is to draw a trend line. Okay, so what I'll do is I will go to the charts after this to show you this strategy first before implementing the multiple time frame analysis. Okay, so step number one is you draw trend line. You are looking for either a trend line break or a trend line bounce. Then you want to draw your Fibonacci retracement tool and watch the 0 0.618 or 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. Okay, apologies for this. This one over here should be a dot instead. Okay, then you want to look for market structure confluence and then you want to enter when you see a trigger at the level. Okay, so that's step by step. Now let's go into the charts and I want to show you how do we do this swing trading strategy without multiple time frame analysis first. Then after that, I will show you how do we apply multiple time frame analysis into the strategy. So very simple. Very simple. The first step that you do is you always draw your trend line first. Okay, so let me just see if I can find a good example over here. Okay, we do have an example over here. Okay, so... So over here, we have a downtrend. And step number one involves drawing a trend line. So you can see that I've connected uh, this swing high here and this swing high here. So what is next? That's step number one. Step number two is you draw a Fibonacci retracement. So I'm going to draw high to low because I'm trying to project uh, 
resistance okay i have another video about how to draw fibonacci retracement uh, in this video i'm going to assume that you already know how to do it but if you do not know how to do it then check out my other video about uh, fibonacci retracement because that's uh that's the complete guide i think it's called the ultimate guide to fibonacci retracement so just check that out okay so this is step number two you draw the fibonacci retracement step number three is you look for market structure at this level which is the 0 0.618 level and the 0 0.786 level so let me just mark this out this is the 0 0.618 level which is also known as the golden ratio and then the 0 0.786 level so somewhere here so if you look left you do see some form of market structure over here you, you can see that uh, if you were to switch to the line chart you can see that uh, there is this this swing low over here something like this so you can reasonably conclude that there is some form of resistance over here okay uh, if you want to be really precise what you can do is you can use the uh, you can draw a horizontal line to this level uh, in fact this level is a good level because if you look back into history you can see that uh, this level was also uh, supported supported so if you change back to the candlestick your entry would have been somewhere over here okay so that's how you do it you first you draw a trend line then you draw your fibonacci retracement tool you look for the 0 0.618 level or the 0 0.786 level then the last step is you look at the market structure to confirm that the level that you are looking at is a very strong level so in this case we have the confluence of the trend line the trend line is saying that there's resistance here then you have the confluence of the Fibonacci level, which is the 0 0.618 slash 0 0.786 level, and you also have market structure. So that's how you do it. That is how you apply this swing trading strategy. So hopefully you understand this. If not, just watch the other video about how to swing trade because uh, that one, that video we really break down. We give you a lot of examples. But this video, we just want to show you how to do multiple time period analysis. So I won't spend too much time on this portion. Now, by the way, we have a free day trading guide for you over here. So you can see that uh, it's, it's very nicely done. We, we teach you uh, how to read market conditions. How do you read candlestick patterns? We have a candlestick pattern cheat sheet for you as well. So if you have not gotten this, the link is in the description. Make sure you download it. Okay, it's totally free. There's no catch. At the same time, please give us a thumbs up because we are trying to reach more traders. So, you know, with your help, you are going to boost the YouTube algorithm and we're going to reach more traders, right? Make sure you subscribe also because we create a lot of videos like this to help you become a better trader. Okay, hopefully you can also see that uh, we are really committed to serving you at the highest level possible. We don't just... Uh, create videos you know once every month we create videos like this every day and we are answering your questions every single day if you have any questions just feel free to leave a comment down below feel free to reach out to us we love to help okay we are really serious about um what we do over here uh we we want to give back to to the society because we know how hard it is as a beginning trader you know beginner trader with, without much capital you don't have money to invest in education and educational courses are expensive and that's why we create this value we create this value to serve you so that you know you do not need to pay thousands of dollars to learn what we learn so hopefully this kind of videos is helpful for you and you found some value from our videos okay so let's uh, move on let me just change over back to the slides and Let's look at how do you actually implement multiple time frame analysis into this swing trading strategy. The answer is actually very simple. It's the same exact steps, except that we are going to in implement this over here. Okay, we're going to implement this over here. We're going to implement the higher time frame key levels. We want to identify the key levels and we want to go into lower time frame to enter the trade. When we do this, we are able to have a bigger reward to risk ratio because you are entering off a higher time frame levels. And as a general rule of thumb, the higher the time frame, the bigger the movement. Because uh, a candle on a weekly chart, it's the range of a weekly candle is definitely bigger than the range of a H1 candle or H4 candle. So if you can find a weekly level and you can find a H4 entry into your weekly level, that's how you actually find big reward to risk trades. So I want to show you how to do that. So the other three steps are the same. It's the same as this over here. So I will not repeat it. 
But what I'll do right now is I'll go onto the charts and show you step by step how do we do this. So let's go back to Euro dollar. Sorry, not Euro dollar, pound dollar. And let's look at uh, the market condition right now. Okay, so step number one is you always go to the higher time frame. So ask yourself, where is price at now? Okay, so it's very simple. Right now, price is actually a resistance. You can see that this is the prior resistance. Okay, if you cannot see this, just change to the line chart. Then you can see that this is the level that the market is looking at. So that is your level. So this is the higher time frame level. Next, you want to go into the lower time frame. Remember what I said about the factor of four, one is to four. So your next time frame, if you want to drill down, if you want to trade the lower time frame, you need to be looking at the H4, the four hour chart. So in this case, I'll look at the four hour chart and I will find my trend line. Remember, we are looking for either a trend line break or a trend line bounce. So in this case, we have something like this. This one over here, if you were to draw this trend line here. Again, I have another video about uh, trend lines. How do you draw trend lines? So if you know you are totally new, you do not know how to draw trend lines, check out my other video. We really have a lot of materials for you. Everything is being covered. So if you do not understand a certain concept in this particular video, right, just make sure to check out the other videos because we really provided you everything we can, everything step by step. We cover everything. So really, there's really no reason why uh, you cannot learn what you need to learn from our channel. So over here, you can see that I connected uh, this swing low with this swing low. And you can see that this is the trend line break. Trend line broke, we tested. So that is the step number one. You are looking for a trend line break or trend line bounce. So in this case, it's a trend line break and you are retesting the trend line. Step number two is you want to draw a Fibonacci. So you take from high to low. Again, if you are trying to find resistance, you draw it from the high to low. Then you are looking at this level which it's the 0 0.618 level and the 0 0.786 level. So let me just draw it over here. And you can see that this level, the confluence, lines in nicely with the upper, the higher time frame resistance. This is your higher time frame resistance. Let me just change the color so that it's clearer. So the black line is actually the higher time frame resistance level, which was identified in the day chart. So that's the power of using the higher time frame. You do that, so you get 1.3128 as your resistance. You go into the H4, you find that a trend line has been broken. What do you do? You draw a Fibonacci retracement and then you see that there is confluence between the higher time frame level over here. Then you see that there's a confluence between the trend line, the broken trend line we tested. You see that there's confluence with the 0 0.618. You see that there is some form of market structure as well. If you look to the left over here, this looks like a head and shoulder. This is the left shoulder. This is the head and this is a potential right shoulder. So you can see that there are many factors. There are many confluence aligning with this trade. And that is why this is a good trade. That is why you can enter somewhere over here. When you see this candle, you can enter somewhere here, put your stop loss above the 0 0.786 level. Again, all this has been spelled out in the other trading video on how to swing trade, how do you put your stop loss, how do you manage your take profit. All this good stuff is included in that video. So just make sure you check that out. I, I'll leave a link in the description as well so you can click the description later to check out that video. So that is how you apply multiple time frame analysis into this swing trading strategy. You start with the higher time frame, you identify a key level. Then you go into a lower time frame, which has to be a, at least a factor of four. In this case, it's a H4. Then you look for either a trend line break or trend line bounce. After you do that, you want to draw your Fibonacci retracement and look at the 0 0.618 level or the 0 0.786 level. Okay, you want to see that there are multiple confluences between the trend line uh, the higher time frame support and resistance key levels and market structure. That's what you want to be doing. So now I've come to the end of this video. I want to end off this video by sharing with you how we took the um, pound dollar trade that we sent uh, in the morning just a couple of uh, hours ago uh, for our premium subscribers. So let me just clear everything. 
So in this case, let's look at the daily. Okay, daily again. What do we see over here? We see that there is a form of uh, support over here that uh, price has broken. So our daily level is about uh, 1.304458. So that's our level. Price has broken it, at least in the uh, lower time frame. In the day, daily chart, it hasn't broken. So your the daily chart is bearish. We want to be selling on the daily chart. So we drill down to the H4 because in the H4, um, we want to align the H4 with the daily. So you can see that uh, in this case, the daily is also, sorry, the H4 is also very bearish. Okay, so H4 is also bearish. So we decide to drill down one more time. Okay, so after the H4, follow, following the factor of four rule, we are going back into the H1. Okay, so H1 again, it's very bearish. So what you can see is you can actually just draw a trend line. It's not very easy to see in the H1, but what you can do is you can drill down uh, even lower. And if you go into the next time frame, which is the M15 time frame, right? Factor of four, remember, always remember factor of four. And you just draw your trend line nicely. Okay, you can draw something like this. Then you, you, you can see that if you were to draw your Fibonacci retracement high to low, Okay, it's here, and you just map out this level over here, 0 0.618 level and the uh, 0 0.786 level. Then this is your level that, uh, you know, price was resisted over here. And in fact, if you, you were to look left, let me just clear this up so it's clearer. If you, 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 you were to look left over here, you can see that uh, there is some form of um, market structure over here. And this upper level coincides with this spike low over here. So this is a good level. And uh, what happens is that price broke um, this key visit support level that uh, we plotted in the higher time frame. And in the lower time frame, price just retraced uh, back up into our trend line. So our swing trading strategy is trend line, right? In this case, it's a trend line bounce. And then you look for a Fibonacci retracement. After the Fibonacci retracement, you want to look for market structure confluence at the same time. So in this case, uh, this is how we executed this trade. We went from um, this daily time frame. Okay, let me just clear it. We went from this daily time frame, this red, this line over here. Okay, it's a bit difficult to see. Let me see if I can just zoom it in. Okay, this is the uh, line. Let me just change the color so it's clearer. Uh, this orange line. So in the daily, we identify uh, this line as a crucial uh, key support. Okay, so what happens is that uh, price went traded below and uh, in the lower time frame, it had a very nice setup, you know, very nice pullback into the trend line, confluence, the market structure and the, and the Fibonacci retracement level. So that's how we actually enter this trade. Okay, so hopefully that is clear. Uh, it's a bit more advanced because we drilled from the daily chart, the H4, H1 to the M15. Okay, you do not need to drill down so many times. But uh, to us, we just saw this opportunity. We thought it was a good trade. And that is why we uh, entered this trade. So hopefully it's clear. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. Okay, as, just as a recap, where I started off this video explaining to you why you should be using multiple time frame analysis basically allows you to have higher probability trades and capture big reward to risk trades. The second thing I went through was how do you select your time frame? How do you choose your time frame combination? You basically use the factor of four. You do not want to choose anything below the factor of four. So if you are using the H4 chart, you can use the daily chart as your higher time frame. You can use your H1 chart as the um, fine tuning entry time frame, but always use a factor of four. Then I went through the swing trading strategy step by step. Basically, you draw a trend line. You look for either a trend line bounce or a trend line break. After that, you draw your Fibonacci retracement. And then you look for a confluence between your Fibonacci retracement, trend line, and market structure. Then I went to the charts and show you how do you incorporate multiple time frame analysis into swing trading. Basically, you just add one additional step, you identify the key support and resistance level or the higher time frame. 
Then lastly, I showed you how we actually entered the pound uh, dollar trade today. Now the trade is still running. We may not hit our take profit. We don't know. But uh, this video is just meant to show you our thought process, how we do it. It's not meant to show you that it's a guaranteed thing. There's no such thing as guaranteed in uh, Forex, in trading, but you're always risking your money. There's always a risk that you lose your money. So please just uh, try to understand the context of what we are doing here. And if you have any questions, just feel free to leave a comment down below. Okay, so if you have gotten value out of this video, please, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It will mean a lot to us. It will encourage us to create more videos like this to better serve you. Right, then do leave a comment down if you have any other questions. It doesn't have to be related to this uh, topic. It can be any topic. We will record a video just to serve you, right? Even if, you know, you are just the only person asking these questions because uh, this is what we are here to do. We are here to serve you. So just, you know, just let us know. Okay, if not, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the Telegram channel.